Welcome to Cruise and Motor Homes. Thank you for traveling with us. To ensure you experience an exciting cruise and adventure, this video explains how to prepare, operate and maintain your motor home. The motor home is equipped with a range of facilities to make your holiday more enjoyable. There are a few important things to remember before you commence your cruise and holiday. The vehicle needs to be plugged into a 240 volt mains power source at least every second night to charge and maintain the 12 volt house battery. The following appliances only work when you are plugged into 240 volts main power including microwave, power socket, battery charger and reverse cycle air conditioning unit in the vehicle. The extension lead has a large earth pin which makes them 15 ampere leads. You cannot connect these leads to the normal household power socket. All caravan park powered sites in Australia have 15 ampere power outlets. To connect the van to a 240 volts power source, please use the 15 ampere extension lead which can be found at the rear passenger side compartment of the van. Then connect one end to the caravan park power outlet and then the other end to the motorhome power inlet. And turn the switch on at the power site pole. The 240 volt outlets are protected by a circuit breaker. If you experience a power surge where the circuit breaker trips, find the circuit breaker inside the motorhome and switch back to on. The motorhome has three 12 volt batteries. One is located under the passenger's side cabin floor in the main driver's cabin and the others are at the rear of the cabin. The battery inside the cabin is called the house battery. The house battery operates the exterior lights, interior lights, fridge, water pump and television. The house battery is charged by an alternator when the vehicle is being driven or the 240 volt system when it is plugged into the mains power source. Cruisen recommends going at the power side every second night to keep your battery charged. To access your fresh water from the sink, Turn on the 12 volt panel, which is located on the side wall as you enter the motorhome. If you have a black 12 volt panel, then turn the main switch on by holding it for three seconds until information appears on the screen in the middle of the panel. Then press the 12 volt switch on and then turn the tap switch on. If you have a white Avita panel, then hold down the red power button for approximately three seconds until information appears on the screen on the left hand side of the panel. Then hold down the tap switch on the 12 volt panel until the orange light comes on. And then use the lever on the tap as you would in any standard kitchen. We recommend that you fill up your fresh water tank as often as possible. To use the external lights, if you have a black panel, then turn the 12 volt switch on and then turn the external light switch on. If you have a white Avita panel, then hold down the light button on the 12 volt panel until the orange light comes on. And then turn one of the silver switches which can be found above the fire extinguisher to operate the external light. To use the cabin lights, if you have a black panel, then turn the 12 volt switch on, or if you have a white Avita panel, then press the light button on the 12 volt panel until the orange light comes on. And then turn one of the silver switches which can be found above the fire extinguisher to operate the internal lights. And then you can operate each light directly by turning on the button located on the device. The motorhome fridge has four power modes, which includes automatic mode, 240 volts, 12 volt only when the engine is running, and LPG. 
it is highly recommended to keep motorhome fridge on auto mode, which automatically detects the power source and operates the fridge. To use the fridge, press and hold the on-off switch for one second. If your fridge is not on auto mode, then change the mode to auto by pressing A button until the A button illuminates with blue light. Once you're plugged into 240 volts electricity, your fridge automatically switches to 240 volt electricity. You can adjust the temperature of the fridge to maximum by pressing the temperature switch until the temperature reaches the maximum bar. If you're not plugged in to 240 volts and you're planning to drive the vehicle, then simply start the engine. Your fridge will automatically switch to 12 volts while driving, where it will just maintain the temperature. If 12 volt and 240 volt electricity is not available, Simply turn the LPG bottle on and your fridge will switch to LPG mode automatically. If you're using the right hand side gas bottle, then turn the middle top switch toward right gas bottle and open the gas valve fully in an anti-clockwise direction. Your fridge will automatically switch to LPG. If you see an orange light flashing on the fridge panel, then simply open the fridge door and press the button with triangle warning sign on it. This usually happens when you switch the fridge to LPG. Once you press the button in, it will stabilize all the lights on the fridge panel and will keep the fridge running. The motorhome is equipped with a television for your entertainment. First, turn on the 12 volt panel if the television is not working, then open the cabinet beside the television and make sure the 12 volt connection is pushed in properly. When you push the 12 volt cable in, a red light will show on the bottom of the television. Then press the power button on the remote to turn the television on. To program the television, select the correct input or source, which is DTV. Then press the menu button on the remote. Then select auto search and press OK and allow the television to tune. You must tune in the television at each location. Please be aware that television signal may be weak in rural or mountainous areas. There is a DVD player built into the television for your convenience. The motorhome has stovetop burners which operate on LPG. Before we demonstrate how this appliance works, please remember it is not safe to use cooking appliances for comfort heating. To run the stove, Please open the LPG gas compartment located on the rear driver side of the vehicle. You will see two gas bottles in this compartment. You can use one gas bottle at a time. Please use the middle switch toward right hand side if you are using the right hand side gas. Or turn the middle switch toward left hand side if you are using the left hand side gas bottle. And open the gas valve fully in an anti-clockwise direction. Make sure there is enough ventilation in the van before you use stove top burners. Then open the gas lid in full. If the gas lid is not fully open, your stove gas burners will not work. So please make sure the lid is fully open. Once you have opened the lid, push the knob in, hold down and turn the burner knob to maximum heat. Whilst the burner knob is still being pushed in, press the igniter switch until the gas lights. Keep holding down the burner knob and wait 15 seconds before slowly releasing the burner knob. The motorhome has a fresh water tank which carries up to 110 litres of fresh water in it. We recommend that you fill up your fresh water tank as often as possible. To fill the water tank, please use the water hose which can be found at the rear passenger side compartment of the van. Please use the key to open the water inlet door. and then open the lid. Then place the bare end of the water hose as far in as possible. Connect the tap fitting of a hose pipe to the Caravan Park fresh water tap and then turn the tap on. When you see the water start dripping off the water inlet, close the tap and take the bare end out and lock the inlet door. 
Please note, do not use too much pressure as the tank must be vented when filling. If you do use too much pressure, an airlock may occur. If this does happen, simply remove the hose, reinsert it and fill slowly. The motorhome also has a mains water access point where you can use water supply directly from the outside tap. To operate the mains water system, unscrew the cap on the mains water inlet and screw in the hose fitting supplied with the hose in the outside storage compartment. Connect the hose to the fitting. Then connect the tap fitting of a hose pipe to the Caravan Park Fresh Water Tap and use water from the main line. Please remember, mains water supply will not fill your water tank. When using the mains water supply, do not have the pump turned on. If the pump is on, then the water will come from the fresh water tank, not the mains water supply. The motorhome has a toilet and shower. To use the toilet, turn on the water pump on the 12 volt switch panel. If you have a black 12 volt panel, then press the 12 volt switch on and then turn the tap switch on. If you have a white Aveda panel, then press the tap switch on the 12 volt panel until the orange light comes on. Push the blue button to fill the base of the toilet with water. Once finished, turn the lever situated below the toilet to empty the waste into cassette. Ensure the lever is in the closed position after use. It is recommended that the toilet cassette is emptied regularly and must be emptied and cleaned before returning the vehicle to the depot. The toilet cassette compartment is located at the driver side. Use the black round key to unlock the door and push both round buttons on the door together to open the compartment door. Then to empty the cassette, lift the blue lever and pull the entire cassette out of the vehicle. If the cassette is jammed, do not force it. Simply check that the toilet lever inside the vehicle is in the closed position. Once you have the cassette out of the vehicle, turn the pour-out spout and unscrew the cap. You can dispose of the waste in a black water dump point. Once you have emptied the toilet cassette, rinse out the cassette then add a toilet chemical along with half a litre to a litre of water. It is important that the cassette clicks back into position as it must align with the toilet above. Never hose out the toilet cassette compartment to clean out any dirt or leaves. Use only a damp cloth to clean the inside of the compartment. The vehicle is equipped with a reverse cycle air conditioner unit. This will generate both hot and cold air to suit your needs. To run the air conditioner, Plug the vehicle into 240 volt electricity. Turn on the unit by pressing the blue button on the remote control. For cold, select the snowflake symbol by pressing mode button. Set the temperature using either the plus for higher or minus for lower button. Turn the temperature to 23 degrees and ensure the fan is turned to medium speed. Please be advised that during hot temperatures, the air conditioners are susceptible to fluctuation in power due to voltage drops from the 240 volt power source. This can cause internal fuses to blow, which will result in the air conditioner not working. For heating, select the three waves arrows symbol by pressing mode button. Set the temperature using either the plus for higher or minus for lower. Please note, in freezing cold conditions under 3 degrees, the reverse cycle air conditioning unit may stop working. Always turn the air conditioner unit off by using the remote before unplugging the vehicle from 240 volt mains power. Water heater in motorhome operates either on 240 volts or LPG, depending on what source is available. To operate the water heater on 240 volts electricity, make sure to connect the van to a 240 volts power source and wait for 20 minutes. 
It will take approximately 20 to 25 minutes before the water is heated and ready for use. To operate the water heater on LPG, turn the gas bottle located on the driver exterior side to the on position and ensure that the valve is fully open. You must turn the valve on the gas bottle anti-clockwise to open and clockwise to close. Then turn on the tap switch on the 12 volt control panel. If you have a black 12 volt panel, then press the 12 volt switch on and then turn the tap switch on. If you have a white Aveda panel, then press the tap switch on the 12 volt panel until the orange light comes on. Push the boiler switch up to 60 degrees. The red light may flash briefly on the boiler switch. It should then go out, indicating that the system is working. If the red light comes back on, it means that the burner has not ignited. And if this does happen, make sure the LP gas bottle is fully open and then push the igniter switch to neutral and then heat up to 60 degrees and wait for 20 minutes. The grey water holding tank collects wastewater from the kitchen, bathroom sink and shower. You must manually empty the grey water tank by connecting the grey water hose to the grey water outlet. The grey water hose can be found at the rear passenger side compartment of the van. Connect the hose to the outlet. Make sure it is firmly attached by pulling down the silver levers on each side of the attachment point on the hose. Place the other end of the hose into the dump station disposal opening. Open the tank by turning the lever so it is parallel with the pipe and wait for it to empty. Once empty, close the tap, remove the hose and stow on the storage compartment. The motorhome has three double beds on board. To make up each of the beds, please follow these instructions. To make the first bed, remove the middle dinette tabletop from the table leg and remove the table from the pole. Do not fully wind the top handle as it will remove it from the mechanism. Remove the table leg from its attachment point by pulling it away. Remove all the cushions, then insert the tabletop between the two seats so that it is resting on the ledges to make up the base of the bed. Find the spare cushion located behind the dinette seat or on the top bed. Use this cushion for the mattress of the bed. Extend the table arms using the handles to establish the double bed. Finalize the bed by using the backrest from the rear dinette. To make the second bed, remove the rear dinette tabletop from the table leg and remove the table from the pole. Do not fully wind the top handle as it will remove it from the mechanism. Remove the table leg from its attachment point by pulling it away. Remove all the cushions. Locate the extension board and rest it on the ledges of the seating area to make up part of the bed base. Use the tabletop to make up the remainder of the bed base. Use the cushions to complete the mattress. Third bed is the overhead bed, which should be accessed by the ladder stored in the overhead compartment. This ladder must be connected to the attachment points horizontally to ensure that it is secure for use. The motorhome is equipped with a shade awning for your convenience. Awning is only designed to be used in fine weather conditions and the awning must be fully retracted in windy conditions or rain. Locate the awning winder arm and centre support behind the front passenger seat. Insert the tip of the awning winder arm into the hook at the end of the awning and twist in an anti-clockwise direction until the awning is extended. Locate the support poles at the base of the awning. Gently slide out the end section of the awning leg before lifting out the remainder of the leg. You must lift out the awning leg so that the wing nuts are facing inward to avoid breakages. Loosen the wing nut on the inside of the support pole then attach the awning support arm into the access point by pulling up the plastic insert, clipping the arm in place and pushing the plastic insert back in place. Then extend or retract the awning to the height you desire and tighten the wing nut. Attach the middle support arm by hooking it to the top of the awning. Loosen the wing nut and then connect the support arm to the base of the awning. Once you have completed one side of the awning, repeat this process to the other side. Make sure the awning is extended to a height where you can safely open the door.
To retract the awning, follow this process in reverse until it has been securely wound away and store the awning winder arm and central support pole back inside the motorhome. Before you depart, there are a few important things to remember before you commence your cruise and holiday. The motorhome entry door has two locks on it. Open each lock by turning the key clockwise on both the locks. Use the square golden key for opening the deadlock and small round golden key for the handle lock. Make sure you push the door in before locking or unlocking the entry door, either by your hands or your shoulder. Use the round black switch inside the motorhome to operate the entry step. First, start from inside the vehicle. Ensure all kitchen appliances are disconnected and are stored in the cupboards and drawers to prevent rattling and breakage. Close all cupboards and drawers. Close the stove lid. Then check the exterior of the vehicle. Make sure the step is in. Ensure the side entry door is closed and locked properly. To lock them properly, please turn the key anti-clockwise on both the locks. And do not forget to push the door in using your shoulder while locking or unlocking the entry door. Make sure LPG bottles are turned off and the compartment door is closed properly. Walk around your motorhome and be aware of any obstruction in the way of your exit. First, adjust the driving seat. Wear the seat belt, adjust the back mirror, and set the stereo and navigation as it is important not to be distracted while driving. Then adjust the side mirrors by using the buttons located beside the steering wheel. To start the vehicle, first make sure the gear lever is in neutral, marked with the letter N, and then press the brake and turn the ignition key. Once the engine is running, keep your foot on the brake and move the lever down to the central position. Your dash display will show which mode you're in. Then push the gear stick into the AM position. It will display Auto 1. This means you're in automatic mode and the vehicle will automatically change the gears for you. With your right foot on the brake, push the gear stick into the AM position again. You will get number one on the bottom of dash display. You are in the manual mode now. Notch the lever toward the plus sign for upshift and then towards minus sign for downshift. When parked for a period of time, select the reverse gear by pushing the lever over to the right, then push it down to where it's marked R. and then turn the engine off and apply the handbrake. Do not use both the brake and accelerator pedal at the same time as it will send the vehicle into limp mode. Use one foot to accelerate and the same foot for brakes. When driving the vehicle in hilly terrain, it's recommended that you activate the up function when driving in automatic. The system will select the most suitable gear depending on the vehicle speed. It will hold the vehicle on slightly higher revs before changing gears. Alternatively, you can drive the vehicle in manual mode using the gear stick to change between gears. The fuel filling point is located next to the passenger door. Simply open the lid using your hands, then use the ignition key to unlock the inlet. Turn the ignition key anti-clockwise to unlock the cap. 
please leave the keys in the fuel cap while refueling. The motorhome accepts diesel only. If you fill the vehicle with unleaded, water or add blue, please do not start the engine and call the cruise and assistance number. Once filled with diesel, place the fuel cap on the inlet and turn the key clockwise to lock it. Remove the key and close the fuel door. At a height of 3.5 metres, your motorhome is much higher than a standard car and must be driven to accommodate its size. To avoid overhead damage when parking or reversing, Cruisen recommends that a second passenger stand on the exterior of the vehicle to help guide the motorhome. Whenever possible, do not drive at night outside of towns and major cities. Animal strikes are a very common occurrence when night driving in regional Australia. With higher animal populations and lonely long roads and open grazing areas, increasing the chance of a collision with kangaroos, wombats, emus, cattle and even camels are most active between dusk and dawn. Driving a motorhome or camper van in Australia at night is a whole other experience and one that we strongly advise all our customers against doing. Once again, thank you for travelling with us. If you have any questions, please go through our user manual or simply contact us on our cruise and assistance number located on the key ring. Your feedback is important for us to improve our service in future. Please do share your experience with us once you finish the holidays. Please follow the instruction on the screen to share your views and experience.